Hello and welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I would like to show you some best practices on how to work with chart widgets. For that video, of going to use one of those note card devices that we have in here, um, which are providing you some real time temperature, humidity, and particulate data. So, first of all, let's create a new chart widget. Um, we go into edit mode on the device dashboard and we press on add widget here. Next, we choose the chart widget, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to select the data that we want to display. So we add a new field and we select, for example, the temperature. This will give you um, immediately the first yeah, graphical visualization of the chart, and then you can go ahead and uh, make some changes to the data field. So first of all, let's select a different color, make it blue. Um, you can switch between bar chart or area chart and also choose things like the interpolation and Y axis. Um, we can choose different kind of axes. This is um, super useful if you, for example, select another or add another field. And in here we go, are going to select the humidity, for example. Um, also, the humidity needs a different kind of color. And as you can see here now, this is placed on the same axis, like the um, axis where the temperature is on, but the humidity range is out of the range for temperature. So we are going to put um, the humidity onto axis number two. And now there are both on separate axis and you can see um, the values in their um, respective range. So you can also configure the axis. Next, go to the axis settings, and we can put, for example, the axis for humidity on the right side. So this looks more like consolidated. Um, and yeah, you can choose whatever you want. Also, you can adapt the available space on these axes that they don't start at zero, but for example, they scale automatically based on the value range in here. Now let's talk about time frame. Um, in this video, I would like to show you some best practices how to work with time frames. Um, and as you can see here, this is um, set to the default time frame, which is this week. It starts at Monday and ultimately ends at Sunday. And if there's a new week, for example, starting, there's only a few data points in here. So most of the time, this is an absolute time frame, and you want to set your custom ones. And as you can see in here, we are providing a from, until, and resolution. And you can override the from, instead of providing like a fixed date, you can say like seven days ago, up until now, um, and then a resolution of three hours. So resolution means the amount uh, or the time between two data points, between all the data points. And the lower the resolution is, for example, if you would set something like five minutes, it fetches a lot of data from the server. So that means the loading time for resolutions in, uh, the range of minutes is much higher than, for example, in the range of hours. Also, this is pretty cool if you, for example, choose um, both to be like a bar. As you can see here, this makes no sense. It doesn't look so good because you can't see it really. Um, you can go into the time frame, for example, and you can provide like um, the last 14 days with resolution of 24 hours. So what happens now is, um, that you see each bar represents um, an average value within 24 hours and you can see the development of yeah the sensor values okay i'm now going to add this and place this here um, in this area so this is our first chart also we can set a custom title in here and i would call this like 14 days trend for example 14 days trends um, and we save this. So, and because we're also interested in high resolution data, we are going to duplicate this. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And in here, we are going to change this graph and the time frame. And instead of 14 days, I want one day, or we can say um, 24 hours. We could also write in 24 hours ago up until now, but with a resolution of let's say 30 minutes. Um, this gives, gives us high information data. We can go back to area chart on both of them and let's go back into the time frame. And as you can see here, the sending interval of this sender is about one hour. So it makes sense to lower it for like 60 minutes, but you could also go in here and set it to five minutes and then it will really, you see the quantization information about the sender 
um, that is sending in higher intervals. So set this according to your um, refresh rate of the samples. Let's leave it to 30 minutes. We press on save. Um, and now, oh, wait, last but not least, let me check this and make it 24 hour trend trends save. And what we've done now is we've created two individual charts. The one is for like 14 day trends with an average for each day. And the other one is like 24 hour trends um, with like a resolution for 30 minutes. This is like a best practice. You can always create two kind of charts, one for high resolution and one for a larger scale, larger time frame, and as an overview. And this actually speeds up the loading time of your dashboard. And you could also go ahead and make some intermediate solution like 14 days. Yes, we keep it, but you could also go to, um, I'm sorry, data back to area chart and then have the time frame set to like um, six hours instead of 24 hours or like three hours. And even two hours would be acceptable for loading speed. And then you can see, okay, we can see the trends in here, some more detail, and then the high resolution data. Yes, so let's bring this back into shape um, and move this in here so that our dashboard looks again like we want this to look. And as you can see here, both trends, the 14 days and the 24 hour trends. This is it with the overview video on best practices, working with charts and time range. And in this documentation where you also found that video, you can also find what kind of variables you are going or you are able to set for individual time ranges. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.